I'm Berks County Commissioner Christian Leinbach, and I want to welcome everyone to our Commissioner's Board meeting for April the 21st of 2022. We are broadcasting live via Microsoft Teams live event, also on BCTV, as well as Facebook and YouTube live. At this time, I'd like to recognize my Executive Assistant, Anne-Marie Grill. Thank you, Commissioner Leinbach. Public comment will be accepted in person and through the Q&A function. Please include your first name, last name, and municipality for all comments. Any comments without name and municipality will not be considered. Each citizen can submit one comment. Comment link is dictated by limitations of the platform being used. Teams Q&A, Facebook, and YouTube. In-person comments will be accepted first, followed by comments submitted virtually. The meeting comment period is limited to a total of 30 minutes, including both in-person and virtual comments. This time period may be extended at the discretion of the board. Please be concise. Comments that are germane to county business will be read during the meeting. It should not be considered to be interactive dialogue with the commissioners. The county solicitor shall be the final arbiter of whether a comment is germane and should be read. Any co commissioner response to public comment will be done at the discretion of the commissioners. Thank you very much, Anne-Marie. As always, we will begin first with a moment of silence, followed by a pledge to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> At this time, we are going to open our public hearing. Uh, this is pursuant to the legal notice published on March the 16th of 2022 in the Reading Eagle. A public hearing is being held for the proposal to form the Schuylkill River Passenger Rail Authority. Uh, we are not limiting the public comment during this hearing. Uh, the process uh, will be explained momentarily, but to introduce the topic, I've asked uh, our director of the Berks County Planning Department, David Hunter, uh, to please come to the microphone and to present some opening comments. David Hunter. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning. I'm very excited this morning. You think you know why, but I'll give you two reasons. One, the Sixers overtime win last night. Woo! Right, 3-0. <laughs> and the reestablishment of passenger rail to the city of Raleigh. Just let's pause for that. It's <laughs> Now, just like the win last night did not win us a championship, it's a big step forward. Mm -hmm. The vote today is a huge step forward toward the restoration of passenger rail service to Berks County and the city of Reading. I'd like to read just briefly before we go through the PowerPoint presentation, I'd just like to read from the proposed resolution that is under consideration this morning. The county commissioners of Berks County deem it in the best interest of Berks County and the residents of Berks County, uh, jointly with Chester and Montgomery County to incorporate a municipal authority to be known as the Schuylkill River Passenger Rail Authority. The authority is being established for the purposes of A, planning for the operation maintenance and funding of inter-county passenger rail services in Berks County, Chester County, and Montgomery County. B, operating, maintaining, and funding inter-county passenger rail service and all facilities necessary or incidental thereto, and contracting with passenger rail service providers in order to provide inter-county passenger rail services in the public in Berks County, Chester County, and Montgomery County. And finally, Ancillary efforts, thank you, in connection therewith, including limit to land acquisition, management, and bonding. Thank you, Ron. And so the PowerPoint simply takes us through a brief history of where we've been and where we're going. Uh, the name is Schuylkill River Pasture Rail Authority, the need for the authority. Uh, briefly, it says that the county, uh, the Tri-County Passenger Rail Committee, 
which has met for the past year. It's a nine member committee has met and considered uh, recommending the formation of the Schuylkill River Passenger Rail Authority and the commissioners have advertised for this public hearing. Next slide. And so there were consensus parameters established early on. Obviously, there was a deed for the restoration of passenger rail. At a minimum, there would be uh, service from downtown Philadelphia to Reading, and there would be proposed stops along the way, including the following. Next slide. And as you can see in the graphic, the proposed rail service corridor stretches from Reading through Norristown and continues down to downtown Philadelphia. And as you can see, there are proposed stops. The stops will be determined by the authority when the authority is established. Next slide. And so after a year of exploring the most efficient manner to restore passenger rail service to the region, the Schuylkill River Passenger Rail Authority will replace the current Tri-County Passenger Rail Committee and be supported with representation and funding from all three member counties. The Schuylkill River Passenger Rail Authority will have the power to formalize agreements, procure funding, and provide for a direct governmental body that can work with Amtrak, proposed Amtrak, PennDOT, the Federal Railroad Administration, and other necessary partners. And so the likely operator is Amtrak. As you can see, uh, the committee has worked with Amtrak over the last year. And Amtrak has several um, uh, positives, obviously, with the existing services in the Northeast Corridor, the proposed extension of services to satellite cities. And so they have a uh, relationship with PennDOT. So we look forward to working continually with Amtrak. Next slide. And so finally, there are proposed authority board members, as you can see on the screen, and these members will meet uh, beginning with the first meeting coming up after the authority is established. And so this body will certainly need your support as you are here this morning. So thank you all for coming. Thank you for your support. Uh, I stand to answer any questions or return back to Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, David. I appreciate all your work uh, in a little bit of background uh, without our planners uh, from Berks, Montgomery and Chester County. I'm not sure this would have been possible uh, over the last year. These planning departments have worked very closely with each other, uh, putting together agendas, working on the technical aspects. Uh, David Hunter uh, from Berks County, Scott France from Montgomery County, and Brian O'Leary from Chester County. Uh, the partnership is uh, an unusual thing to see uh, in these days. Uh, there was no red or blue uh, conflicts. It was all about what do we need to do, what is the next step, and what's the best way to accomplish it. And that brings us to where we are today. Let me just briefly go over uh, some guidelines. Uh, we are going to have our hearing where we've opened the hearing for uh, the passenger rail formation of a passenger rail authority. In that process, those of you that arrived and signed up to speak by 10 a.m. this morning will be speaking first. Uh, you're limited to three minutes. Uh, Anne-Marie Grill uh, will be timing. I will ask if you hear the timer go off, just finish your sentence and uh, we'll move on to the next speaker. Uh, once all the in-person people have spoken and I have a list of everyone that signed up by 10 a.m., we will then read online comments. Online comments are not limited based on time. They are limited based on the platform on which a per the person is commenting. And so there are three platforms, Microsoft Teams, uh, Facebook, and YouTube. Finally, uh, once we finish online comments, if there are other people in person that arrived after 10 a.m. that have signed up and would like to speak, we will give uh, each of those individuals an opportunity uh, to speak as well. I did post a note online, but I wanna reiterate that. 
because this hearing is within the context of a county commissioner's meeting, I would ask those uh, posting online to post uh, the uh, term, and what did I say, rail hearing, rail hearing at the beginning of your comment so we can quickly determine this is a comment that relates to the hearing versus a comment that may relate uh, to the general uh, commissioner's meeting. At the conclusion of all the comments, uh, each of the commissioners will be given an opportunity for any follow-up comments. And then at that time, as chair, I will entertain a motion uh, on uh, the resolution. The board will vote and we will then close the hearing and then move into the general meeting. You are welcome to stay for the general meeting, but you're not obligated to stay. Uh, I know that uh, the vast majority of you are here about the hearing uh, and to comment on the hearing, and we absolutely understand that. Uh, but if you don't have anything else to do after the hearing, stick around and uh, you can listen to uh, the action and uh, work of the county commissioners. So with that, is there any anything else from our solicitor, CAO? That Should we officially open the hearing? I, I did. Okay. Yeah. We're officially opened and then we'll, when, once the vote is complete, we will close uh, the hearing. So with that, uh, we will begin with uh, public comment. We'll begin with Ted Bassano for the Burks Opera from Why Missing Pennsylvania. If you please step up to the microphone. Thank you, Commissioner. I'm pleased to be here. Uh, my name is Ted Bassano and I'm a board member of the Burks Opera Company. We are very excited about this uh, creation of an authority and the eventual reestablishing of a rail line uh, all the way from Reading to Philadelphia and back forth. And basically I have three reasons for supporting this. One is economics. The arts, not only in Berks County, but all up and down the proposed rail line is big business. It contributes mightily as far as lodging, businesses, auxiliary services, all the things, ticket sales, all the things that are involved, local and state uh, revenues are contributed through um, attendance at these um, artistic formats by increasing access up and down the line to communities who have operatic or visual performing and cultural events would enhance the economic viability of the entire region. Um, a study on the American for the Arts done in 2015, and a new one will be coming out shortly, showed that 25% of the attendees at local Berks County events came from outside the area. With passenger rail making it more efficient for people to get back and forth, not relying on automobiles, we can uh, look at a more favorable um, uh, impact to our area. The next item is employment opportunities. Not only for the people serving the arts in our county and in the region, but also for students, giving them performance venues by which studying in Philadelphia or up and down the line at other colleges and universities, they have venues in which they can apply their trade, their artistic trade and grow in that career form. And the last item I want to address is the quality of life issue. Arts play an entirely critical aspect in the well-being of any community. And if people can attend, it makes their life a lot more enjoyable and it makes the spirit of a community that much more enjoyable. Also demographics, the older one gets, and we know through the study by the Americans for the Arts, that a large portion of attendees are upper age groups, which means relying on automobiles may be not as viable for them as they get older and a train may be a more viable way to do it. Passenger rail will not be the key to solving all the problems in the world, but I think with regards to the arts and the viability and the cultural enhancements to our communities up and down the line, I think that this proposal is worthy of support and Burke's Opera Company does support this. Thank you. 
Thank you very much, uh, Ted. Uh, we'll move now to Trish Shermont, Visions Federal Credit Union from the city of Reading. Trish. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. And thank you for holding this hearing. I'm going to read my comments. Sure. Uh, my name is Trish Shermont, and I'm the Director of Governmental Affairs and Urban Development for Visions Federal Credit Union. I've lived and worked in Reading for over 30 years, and I consider this my home. As a seasoned veteran in the credit union industry, I've had the privilege of navigating the growth market and penetration of Visions within the community and involved in various community projects and events uh, that make our city of Reading great and a catalyst for growth and a resilient future. Visions Federal Credit Union is a $5.6 billion financial cooperative headquartered in Endwell, New York. We have 58 branches in New York, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania, and Reading is the southernmost footprint of our tri-state market. Currently, we serve over 200, 230,000 customers, 35,000 of which are in uh, the Pennsylvania market. Visions PA market includes 10 branches, including five within Berks County, and first floor. As we celebrate this walk to work and utilization of public transportation model, we are enamored by the possibilities of including an extended footprint into additional markets and talent at acquisition through passenger rail. Mm. Connecting the city, the city of Reading to Philadelphia, New York and DC corridors will bring economic development to the city of Reading, allowing for more job opportunities and increased smart walkable developments, improving our downtown and offering an economic impact that will last for decades. This project is not new to the community and thanks to the efforts and collaboration of many, the vision and reestablishment of commuter rail service has been supported through various analysis, planned feasibility studies and the recent infusion of federal infrastructure, investment, and jobs funding. This will bring it closer to fruition. We are encouraged at the progress and the support in the community and our trust our thought leaders continue to mine the enrichment this opportunity has to offer. Considering all parties involved, it is with great enthusiasm that we at Visions report a resounding yes in support of the reestablishment of passenger rail in this authority. A direct quote from our CEO, Ty Muse, when I think of Reading, I think words like innovation, resilient, and forward thinking. I see the opportunity to bring rail services back to Reading as the opportunity to cement a vibrant future. As an organization, we continue to invest and be an integral part of the fabric of our city of Reading. And like the thought leaders before us, we see great things on the horizon. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Trish. This time, I'd like to recognize Dr. Jennifer Murray from the Reading School District and to take a moment to officially, on behalf of the County of Berks, welcome you to Berks County and the Reading uh, School District. And it's fresh in my mind because Jason Bruderick just sent out a reminder about uh, the Community Foundation having a welcoming event on the 28th, and I can't make it. So consider this a formal well, thank you. <laughs> welcome to Berks County. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so on behalf of the Reading School District, I'm here to support the efforts to reestablish the passenger rail system uh, from Reading to Philadelphia. The positive outcomes that this project will have on our community are abundant and far reaching. As we know, transportation is vital to modern day living and the affordable access and ideal location in the city of Reading is key to the development of our urban environment and the greater surrounding communities. Also, financial growth and economic development are sure to follow with the ease of travel. The passenger railway would remove barriers and create increased educational and labor opportunities for our 18,000 students and their families in the Reading School District that may not otherwise be possible for them. The city of Reading has had relatively flat assessment base for the last 10 years with little or no growth in housing or new commercial development. And as a result of as a result of urban sprawl, both residential and commercial property owners have moved to the suburbs, which has decreased the value of properties in the city. Passenger rail would increase the value of the properties by increased development or acquisition of residential properties within the city centered around the possible rail stations or stops. 
In addition to increased property values, passenger rail would allow for residents to commute to and from southeastern Pennsylvania, where salaries and wages are higher, which in turn will generate more local earned income tax revenue that are shared between the school district and the city of Reading. Increased real estate and earned income taxes provides local resources to support educational opportunities for our students and reduces our reliance on state funding. Additionally, the proposed reestablishment of the passenger rail service infrastructure enhances the transportation options of the greater community and is ideal in addition to support our 18,000 students. The railway system will serve as a two-way venue for opportunity for our residents in and out of the county, in one aspect, it will broaden the horizon of our students and families by allowing them to explore out opportunities outside their typical boundaries, but conversely, it will open Reading, Pennsylvania and Berks County for others outside our community to find and explore. The passenger railway would provide our students more opportunities for access to higher education, careers, labor industry and experiences, all while remaining cities, uh, city residents. In addition to my letter of support, I have an additional letter facil facilitated by Dr. Jill Hackman of the Berks County Intermediate Unit, and it is signed by the 17 superintendents of the Berks County, along with two CTC directors. Collectively, we serve over 70,000 plus students and their families and all in support of the passenger railway system. So I thank the commissioners for your leadership in taking on this project and we look forward to seeing the passenger railway in Reading. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Murray. <clears throat> well, that was perfect timing. Help her cancel that. You got it. Paul Jansen uh, from CELG, as well as the Berks County Water and Sewer Association. Good morning. My name Good is Paul Jansen, and I am the director for the Center for Excellence in Local Government at Albright College. I've been the director for almost nine years. CELG is a, and, and its components serve 71 of the 72 municipalities in Berks County, as well as the county itself. My comments will be brief. The issues of restoring passenger rail from Reading to Philadelphia and beyond has been a long-term goal in the county since the service was terminated. The ability of businesses in Berks County to recruit and employ a labor force outside of the reliance of automobile access is a game changer for Berks industry and commerce. The eastern half of the county can access Pot Pottstown while the center and western parts of the county can access the service from Reading. In addition, the rail operation will strengthen BARDA's public transportation network and develop new opportunities to serve all areas of Berks County. Finally, this service is not activating an inactive rail system, which creates noise and safety concerns. Instead, it is utilizing a well-traveled freight corridor and will be but a fraction of the traffic which currently use, utilizes the corridor. The purpose of the authority only has an upside benefit for Berks County and is worthy of the political and tax support the authority will need to ensure that this service is restored and, and, and a successful endeavor. Um, I want to speak extemporaneously because this morning, uh, another component of uh, the uh, Center for Excellence in Local Government is the Berks County Water and Sewer Ath uh, Association, and they unanimously uh, passed a motion to support this uh, process um, because of their, their need to get uh, uh, access to other areas uh, in Pennsylvania for training, the economic and uh, uh, development opportunities that occur in Berks County, which of course they provide water and sewer and, and support for that. And the sale of that helps them. Um, so I wanna make sure that it's on the record that the Water and Sewer Association as well as CELG fully supports this endeavor. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much, Paul. Uh, with that, we'll move to John Loyak, uh, Alvernia University, Reading, Pennsylvania. John. Good morning. Good morning. I'd like to voice uh, Alvernia's support for the creation of the Schuylkill River Passenger Authority that will lead the return of passenger rail service from Reading to Philly and beyond. Studies tell us, because I'm a data guy from a university, that the passenger rail will generate 1.4 billion in regional income, create new jobs, increase property values by 1.1 billion and create over a billion in additional state and local federal revenues over 30 years. 
This initiative has the potential to create significant improvement for Berks County students, schools, and the community at large and provide greater access to the advantage of quality education programs offered by Berks County's colleges and universities here in the city. Rail will serve as a reliable connector to the regional job market, expanding local business development, increasing the standard of living, and enabling our graduates to raise their children here in Berks County. More importantly, it creates the next key driver to invest in downtown Reading and will create a wave of investment in housing, retail, restaurant, and commercial development in our city. We fully support, support the Berks County Commissioners for their visionary leadership and uh, this once in a generation project. We believe like College Town, this initiative will be a game changer for our city, county, and region. Thank you. Thank you very much, John. Uh, we'll move now to Greg Downing of Reading, Pennsylvania. Greg. Uh, good morning, commissioners. Good morning. Uh, I too, uh, well, first, I am the executive director of uh, South Central Transit Authority, which oversees and runs BARTA, the local public transit uh, agency here in Reading. I first want to, like David Hunter, acknowledge that our 76ers won last night. Yeah. I'm a <laughs> resident of Philadelphia, so that is very important to me. Um, so, as he said, going up 3-0, as well as this here a uh, rail uh, opportunity for Reading, I and we stand in uh, conjunction with the rail authority and and promoting and approving the um, the continual, uh, I guess, promotion of public transportation and transportation and whole overall in this region. I am a product of Amtrak and the opportunity that it brings. I uh, started in Lancaster as the director of operations and lived in Philadelphia. For four and a half years, I, ca I traveled on Amtrak to Lancaster every morning and every afternoon, allowing me the opportunity to uh, reach some of the goals that I have, which ultimately led to me being the executive director here. I see firsthand the opportunity this would allow residents not only of Reading, but of people coming into Reading, bringing revenue as well as bringing expertise and bringing service to the fine people here already. I again stand in, in, in conjunction with the authority, uh, the promotion of the authority, and I'll close by saying go Sixers. Thank you. Great, thank you very much. Uh, we'll turn now to Michael Gumbar Jr. of Reading, Pennsylvania. Good morning, commissioners. Good morning. I'm here this morning in my capacity as the vice chairman of the Berks County Convention Center Authority. Um, I am pleased to report that the authority had a meeting this morning at 7 a.m. So unfortunately, I was not able to stay up to watch the Sixers last night. <laughs> but I, the uh, Convention Center Authority did unanimously approve a motion uh, providing its full support for the formation of this authority. Um, from our perspective, the provision of passenger rail service to Reading and Burst County <clears throat> will result in a tremendous benefit to the arts and entertainment industry. Um, Mr. Bonanno kind of stole my thunder, so I will just echo his comments uh, on, on that side of things. Um, but in addition to what he had to say, we are hopeful and confident that the rail service will expand the base of our prospective visitors, customers, and clients to the Satander Arena and the Satander Performing Arts Center. We also believe that this additional option of transportation will ease the burden of congestion on our road and parking systems during major events downtown. So with that, the Burst County Convention Center Authority strongly supports the formation of this authority, and we would respectfully request the commissioners to adopt the resolution. Thank you. Thank you very much, Michael. Uh, we'll turn now to Jason Burkholder of Why Missing Pennsylvania, and he's also provided uh, written copy for uh, the commissioners. Good morning, Commissioner. Good morning. Uh, I am the uh, president of the Reading Burks Association of Realtors. My name is Jason Burkholder. I'm here today representing the 1,200 plus realtors who are members of the association, and we would like to express our support <clears throat> for the establishment of the Schuylkill River Passenger Rail Authority between Berkshire and Montgomery counties. 
Reading has a long history as a transportation hub. Reading Railroad's own monopoly board for a reason. Mm -hmm. And uh, reestablishing the passenger rail now are the farthest they've ever been since it was disconnected in 1981. The plans under consideration to share space with the freight rail is the most cost-effective plan ever produced. This effort is a support of our state and federal leaders, as well as lots of local people. And Amtrak's identified the corridor as part of their 2035 extension uh, expansion plans. The reestablishment of the passenger rail from Reading to Philadelphia and beyond will be a catalyst for substantial economic development in Berks County and throughout the region. Based on a study funded by the Berks Alliance, property values will increase by more than a billion dollars over the next 30 years with ample opportunities for new transit oriented development. The enormous unfulfilled demand for housing out there, particularly in walkable communities that provide accessible, reliable, and convenient ways to travel between home and work, schools, and, rec and recreation are going to benefit tremendously. New transit-oriented development as a result of the restoration of the passenger rail is going to create new residential and commercial interest in currently underutilized properties. It's going to preserve green space and farmland by directing development towards existing communities as well as others have said, reduce traffic congestion uh, by providing alternative transportation to quality jobs throughout the region. So the Reading Berks Association Realtors and its members strongly support the creation of the authority. Thank you very much, uh, Jason. We'll now recognize Kevin Murphy uh, from Jefferson Township and BCCF. Yeah. Uh we never refer to it as BCCF. Oh, sorry about that. And, and, <laughs> and, That's and we're not joke. going to start now, but I do, <laughs> I do want to thank the commissioners. I also want to commend you on your three minute time limit. We'll be adding that to community foundation meetings uh, in the future. Um, thank you for having me. On Monday, a group of developers announced a $1.3 billion plan to transfer the, transform the old Pocono Manor Resort in Monroe County into a Jimmy Buffett themed Margaritaville resort. So what triggered this sudden act of parrot head related investing? Um, well, the resort will be the site of an Amtrak station on the new Scranton to New York route. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not here to suggest that if we return passenger rail to Reading, we'll be holding these meetings in flip flops at 7th and Franklin sipping on boat drinks. Uh, but it is indicative of the kind of economic investment that occurs everywhere around the world when we make investment in fixed passenger rail. And it's the kind of economic growth that we might imagine will happen here. Our economy has been steadily and, and markedly improving in Berks County over the past few years. Our families are generally better off than they were five years ago. You have a historic opportunity to accelerate that progress today. You have, it's a rare opportunity. I don't think that in the time any of us have been here, we've had this kind of chance to work together to create the kind of economic growth that passenger rail will bring. When we opened the Drexel Medical College last August, it provided us with a very physical reminder of a reality that I think we all knew. We are part of an economic region that emanates out of the city of Philadelphia, and in fact, part of a corridor that goes from Boston to Washington. Our economy, our future is tied to our ability to participate in that region. So today you have an opportunity, I think, to vote in a way that our children and our grandchildren will thank us for our foresight. And I urge you to adopt uh, the resolution and uh, Mr. Chairman, I'll provide you written copies of, of the comments. Thank you very much, Kevin, appreciate it. Jimmy Buffett might come by. He might. <laughs> Denny Laura is the best guy to get to uh, bring him here. Uh, Jack Gumbach, West Reading, Pennsylvania. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, uh, County Commissioners. Uh, my name is Jack Gumbach, uh, and I'm here in my capacity as the president of the Greater Reading Young Professionals. Um, we are eager and excited uh, for this opportunity to expand passenger rail and connect us to uh, the southern southeast part of PA uh, and Philadelphia. Um, the mission of GRIP is to simply put support young professionals to attract, to retain, um, and to have a little fun while doing that as well. And 
restoring passenger rail is a once in a lifetime, once in a generation opportunity, and we are enthusiastically supportive and would like to thank the commissioners for their leadership and uh, leading this project, but also building a broad base of support to get this done. Thank you. Thank you, Jack. Uh, we'll now turn to John Weidenhammer from Why Missing. Good morning, commissioners. Thanks morning. for holding this hearing. It's been a long journey getting to this point. I can't thank you enough for your uh, fine work getting us to this point, but I'll be quick to point out that we still have a long way to, to go on uh, this journey. So I'm here today speaking on behalf of the Berks Alliance and the Greater Reading Chamber Alliance as a board member of both organizations. Game changer. We're talking today about a game changer. The restoration of passenger rail service along the Schuylkill River corridor will dramatically, positively change the trajectory of our community. Some view the rail effort as simply a transportation project, allowing us to move more efficiently between Reading, Philadelphia and beyond with fewer carbon emissions. It is so much more. Rail restoration is a large economic development effort, which will have lasting positive impact on the economy of the region, specifically downtown Reading. Rail restoration also solves an equity issue for residents of our community for who for too long have been cut off from an affordable means of transportation to Philadelphia as Reading has become increasingly disconnected and an isolated city. Now is the time to act. We urge the county commissioners to vote in favor of forming the passenger rail joint municipal authority, as well as voting in favor of providing necessary funding for startup of the rail authority. Moreover, we urge the county to set aside funds now to make the necessary infrastructure improvements, which will be required to effectively operate rail service in Reading. As a reminder, this is a game changer. Now is the time to act. Thank you. I bring letters of support that I think have been communicated electronically already from the Greater Reading Chamber Alliance, the Berks Alliance, and uh, one of our premier developers, Alan Schumann. Thank you. Apologize in advance. I'm going to mess your name up, uh, but not on purpose. Follow us, Seos. Bahamadis. I'll correct you. You'll yeah, correct me. <laughs> From Reading, <Brandon>, Pennsylvania. <laughs> Lucene Sullivan. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll recognize Lucene as the helmet as well. Good morning, commissioners. I'd like to request, if possible, that we speak together. I think we signed up separately because we are together. <laughs> Um, and thank you for uh, ho host, uh, hosting this hearing. We're Lucine Sahelnik and Balasios Lahanyatis, uh, proud residents of the city of Reading and owners of the Great American Creamery, located at 645 Penn Street in downtown Reading. People always ask us why we opened in Reading. In our market research, we found that there are over 10,000 people working in downtown every day and almost 50,000 people living within one mile of our location. Our neighbors include a world-class hotel, the Santander Arena and Performing Arts Center, which brings thousands of visitors year-round to our downtown core, and our fellow local entrepreneurs. We also have a 30-foot storefront window and outside dining area that allows us to watch the train roll through our town, people smile, clap, and enjoy the excitement. So to answer your question, why Reading? We say Reading is ready. Restoring passenger rail service to Reading would do much more than connect us to the greater railroad infrastructure. It would jumpstart economic development that we already see and are a part of. A bustling railroad station in the heart of our city would increase the number of visitors and customers for the Great American Creamery and neighboring businesses like Salsa Burrito, Reading Science Center, and the Cafe de Columbia. Uh, we live in Reading. Uh, we work here, we invest here, we play here. And uh, from our experience, uh, we've we've seen that Reading indeed is ready. Reading is ready for entrepreneurs and investors to start small businesses in downtown Reading and uh, benefit from the uh, from the train coming to town. Uh, Reading is ready for a larger, more diverse workforce and industry, which a commuter rail would facilitate. Reading is ready to grow into its role as the fourth largest city in the Commonwealth. Reading is ready for the passenger rail. We invite you to come and have an ice cream at the Great American Creamery and share our million dollar view of the train passing by every day, sometimes twice or three times a day. 
Uh, we imagine a, a time in a very near future where people will be disembarking from this train from a passenger rail and spending the day in the city in downtown Reading, uh, enjoying an ice cream, having dinner, seeing a world-class show or sporting event, uh, or visiting the arts in downtown, uh, or anything else that our wonderful city has to offer. So in closing, we do support Berks County joining the uh, Schuylkill River Passenger Rail Authority uh, to bring the vision of restoring passenger rail to Reading. Thank you very much. Hi, thank you for having this hearing today. I live in Wernersville. I've been a pastor here in the city for about 30 years now. Uh, I'm, I'm the parent of a 35 year old who works in Center City, Philadelphia, who a couple of times a month rides Amtrak to Lancaster where I can go and pick her up. My wife and I visit children and grandchildren in the greater Philadelphia area by going to the Paoli station, which SEPTA re recently uh, improved. We go to the Paoli station and ride into 30th Street station. That's still an hour away from here. I would love the opportunity to be able to get on the train in this city and go to Philadelphia. I also take groups of senior adults to Philadelphia and to New York uh, because they want to go to those institutions, art and cultural places there. And th there's also people there that want to come here. Someone earlier said about the senior adults not wanting to drive the Schuylkill Expressway, even though I'm only 62 years old, I don't want to drive it either, especially on a Friday night. So I invite and encourage uh, this to happen as soon as possible. In fact, uh, I'm going to Philadelphia tomorrow, so I wish I could get on the train tomorrow and go. Thank you, and please support this. Uh, next speaker is George Washington from Warnersville. Wondered about this one. Well, thank you, uh, Father of our country apparently <laughs> wanted to endorse the project, uh, showed up, but left before his opportunity came to speak. So if there is an actual George Washington, I apologize for the joke, but uh, I didn't write it. it it's there. <laughs> OK, um, I can't read the last name. It's, I believe it's Harry uh, from Reading. There we go. Yes, my name's Harry Stilfer. I want to commend everybody here. Wonderful ideas. Only trouble is nobody worked in the railroad. They don't know anything about them. They like it. Cost. Big factor. Cost. Amtrak makes no profit. Great passenger service makes no profit. Water, great bus service makes no profit. Taxpayers support it. Who are trained to come to Reading for a working schmuck like me to take it every day. Financially, it's out of my reach. Can't afford it. And we're running the railroad backwards. I don't know what you people are thinking about. I really don't. You really think somebody's going to go on a train with a piece of art? They'll throw him off. Passenger train is for commuting, meaning you don't shop. You don't take stuff on trains. Give one problem, there's many, but one. We want to take a train from Reading to Philly to New York. That's running backwards, gentlemen. You want to run into the future. You don't want to run backwards. And that's exactly what you're doing. Why is the train running from Philly to Reading up into the New Jersey Transit Authority in the North into New York. Somebody's not thinking. You have people in the committee that never worked on a train. They don't know what a knuckle floor is. They don't know what an axle is. They don't even know the operational cost of how trains run and why passengers in here no more. I worked in the Reading Railroad when it quit passenger. You know why? Nobody took it. The only people that loaded up in the morning were ready employees. 
You have a gentleman here who works for Amtrak. He told you how wonderful it was. Sure. Did he pay to ride the train? Probably not. And when you ride for free, it's a wonderful thing. The county is going to have an authority. This one is going to be astronomical. Who's going to pay it? The taxpayers that you will poor, they're going to have higher home value, also higher taxes. This is something I'd like to know. How many trains are going to run a day? I don't hear that. I don't hear that from any of this audience here because they don't know anything about trains, except they go toot toot all aboard. That's not the whole thing. An authority that puts used gentlemen on the hook for money. You did a wonderful job less than 300 feet away from here with the hotel that were built for $60 million and you allowed it to be assessed at less than $25 million. Shame on you. Something to think about. Something to really think about. Cost factor. Good morning, commissioners. I am from uh, Birdsboro. I serve on borough council uh, for the borough, the great borough of uh, Birdsboro, and I'm here to represent them in wholeheartedly endorsing the uh, concept of passenger rail uh, service uh, being reinstated uh, from Reading to uh, Philadelphia. Uh, it would be redundant uh, for me to enumerate the uh, many advantages and benefits of this uh, service, so I, I won't go into that. Uh, they were well stated by uh, previous speakers. But um, I would strongly advocate uh, for the prospective authority uh, to give thoughtful consideration uh, for the establishment of Birdsboro as being a station along the, uh, uh, the route. Um, uh, my wife, back in the 1960s, uh, traveled from Birdsboro on passenger rail to Philadelphia to study language. And uh, were it not for uh, that convenience, uh, she wouldn't have ended up uh, teaching uh, Spanish and French at Upper, per Upper Perkiomen High School. And uh, I, uh, I strongly uh, look forward to the same opportunities being afforded to others uh, in the future. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. And Kevin Moore, Esquire, Spring Township. Good morning, commissioners, Madam Solicitor. Uh, I, I'm here this morning uh, in my capacity, both professionally and personally, as a consumer of rail services. From 1993 to 1995, uh, I lived in the Delaware Valley. I'm a, a Shillington native, of Berks County, but I lived in the Philly area and I was a regular daily commuter on SEPTA Regional Rail, uh, both for personal and professional use. And when I moved back to Reading in 1997, uh, I missed out on that opportunity and commuted to Philadelphia for court and for, uh, for family uh, events uh, on the highways. And I can't tell you how many times I cringed when I had my children in the backseat of the car and I saw yet another cross on the side of the highway, you know, memorializing someone's death. I can't tell you how terrified I am of distracted driving where I see it every single day on every highway. As a professional, I have to appear in court in, in Philadelphia uh, and I would make regular use of rail service here in Berks County, and I would pay for my ticket uh, to use uh, rail service out of Berks County. For depositions, for meetings, anything that takes me to the Delaware Valley as a professional, uh, I would use and I wholeheartedly support the resumption of rail service to Berks County. Uh, I'm not here on behalf of the Bar Association, but I know there are some attorneys here in the room. Uh, I'm sure that any attorney uh, would jump at the opportunity to uh, be able to work on the train as I did when I lived in the Delaware Valley, as opposed to white knuckling it down the Schuylkill uh, to get the court on time. And those are the benefits for me as a consumer of rail service. 
on a personal level. Uh, you know, we all taught our kids to, to grow up and uh, see the world. Well, some of those kids aren't coming back. So I have a daughter in New York City. I have a son in Baltimore. And uh, to pick up my daughter in New York City, it's a six hour trip by car uh, out and back. For her to take rail and subway and transit to get to us in Reading, down to Philadelphia, out to Lancaster and up to Spring Township, it's about five hours all in uh, for her commute. For my son in Baltimore, the same thing, but a little less. I would love the opportunity to jump on a train to see my kids and go see shows in New York City and have them come see us. Uh, th those are the benefits to me as a consumer. Uh, I strongly support the resumption of rail service and uh, echo Mr. Weidenhammer's um, uh, enumerated um, requests for both funding uh, and the resumption of rail service, the creation of the authority. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Kevin. Uh, we're going to go to online. I think we have one comment. I'm going to ask uh, one last check of the sign-in sheet in the back. There's no more? Okay. Uh, go ahead, Anne-Marie. And I, well, I have, I have Darlene Garcia. I was, they handed this to me a while ago. And before we close all comment, I wanted to make sure that no one else has signed up. So we'll come to you after the online comment. Not a problem. Anne-Marie. Online comment. Michael Toledo, president and CEO of Centro Hispano resident and resident of Maiden Creek. The Centro Hispano is a 501c3 organization that has served the grower, growing Latino community in Greater Reading over the last 50 years. In our work with the community, our goal has been to break down barriers and create pathways to lift our undeserved community to find jobs that pays a family sustaining wage. To support Latino entrepreneurs who are looking to start businesses in our community and to open corridors of opportunity for Latinos to con contribute to the economic development of our greater Reading community. Public trans transportation is a critical lifeline for the Latino community. Like most Americans, we depend on it for economic and social mobility. One of the biggest challenges we have heard time and time again that our community faces is the lack of transportation available to those in and out of Reading. Passenger rail is a critical element of America's transportation system. Passenger rail service will support economic development, connects undeserved communities like Reading to, to opportunities and jobs outside of the city, bring investment and business opportunities to Reading, and help break down the barriers of those that do not have access to transportation. In the Latino culture, family connectivity is very important. When there was daily bus service available in Reading, Latino ridership to Philadelphia and New York were the, were the routes with the highest number of passengers. Since daily bus service has been curtailed in the city, this has created a barrier for families that would come together. The top Amtrak stations by ridership are in Philadelphia and New York. If passenger rail service would come to Reading, the Latino community would have a positive impact to ride to rideship to those locations. Latino families are also heavy travelers to their Caribbean countries of origin, most of them using LaGuardia and Philadelphia to get to their destinations. He continues, having passenger rail in Reading that will provide easier access to airports in the Northeast will positively impact ridership if rail service is restored as well. Passenger rail is in Greater Reading is an investment in our future. We know the passenger rail service will provide direct economic impact on our local economy. It will help us to expand to meet future population growth and travel demand of the growing community. With the future growth of our community, we, we do not support the opportunity. If we do not, let me, let me back up. If the future growth of our community, with the future growth of our community, if we do not support the opportunity to expand and bring back passenger rail to Reading, this growth will lead to crippling congestion on the highways and will set a community back that wants to contribute to the economic vitality of the region. The Centro Hispano supports passenger rail service to Reading. Uh, this one, uh, this one is from Rob Ogle. He is a resident of Douglasville. Thank you for your time and efforts. I respect no larger group or coalition, but can speak to the experience of one of many communities 
commuters who lives who who whose lives sorry would be positively changed by restating rail service to Pottstown or Reading. I moved to Berks County last spring. My wife and I love the natural beauty of the area. I work in Philadelphia because I love my job downtown and cannot work fully remote. I avidly support reinstating rail service to Pottstown and Reading because it will not only ease a ease a costly and long commute, but it will make a two to three hours of my day significantly safer. In six out of the last eight days, I drove to Philadelphia and back. I passed accidents along 422 and the expressway. I have previously commuted by train and public transit for years while living in other states and hope for the opportunity to conveniently ride in the community of fellow passengers and avoid unnecessary congested polluting and stressful traffic. I much I would much prefer to keep my business in Berks County rather than commute to Exton, Malvern and Chester County, the closest rail options. And that concludes online. Thank you very much, Anne Marie. And we have one more in person. Uh, individual Darlene Garcia, uh, Brooks Latino Workforce Development Corporation here in Reading. Darlene. Good morning. Good morning. I, I'd like, so I'm the Executive Director of Brooks Latino Workforce Development Corporation, also known as Brooks Tech Centro. And from even before the opportunity to come speak, I think I would have volunteered in line to be part of the ones who uh, would advocate for this because I, I see it most certainly as not just essential, but how not to go this route. Uh, we are a growing Latino population and as it was echoed and, and I want to applaud the, the online comment, I believe you said it was Mike Toledo because he really encompassed everything that um, every aspect of how it affects the Latino community and how um, we have been dealing with a lot of participants at the center that have really high needs for transportation, some of which do come, the majority of which are in Reading, but we have gotten phone calls for so many people that are in the surrounding areas of Berks and are really struggling with being able to get from point A to point B. And just also understanding the general quality of life and connecting to family members and, and just other necessities when it comes to getting to, as was mentioned, the, tra the regional transportation um, hubs around the area. And I want to also speak on a personal level as a newer city already in resident in Berks County um, resident as well, since I had first lived outside of Reading my first year here. And one thing that I would mention is when I was looking for an opportunity uh, to kind of commute to the back and forth from New York City, where I'm originally from, I was just so excited that at the least of things, I was able to find a bus that would take me from, from New York to Reading only to know that two weeks later, pandemic closures would begin. And from that moment, there were basically no routes. Um, I had a vehicle, I just had opted. I, you know, I've lived in so many different cities where I have heavily relied on metro regional options for anywhere from SEPTA to uh, Metro North to Metra in Chicago, but these have been an essential part of my career as a professional and as a graduate student um, for to just be able to do a lot of the work. In my case, it happens to be I studied urban planning and I can tell you that there, you know, being able to implement this in this county is and being able to find the means is really the only way to go in terms of the economic growth here. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Darlene. Uh, that ends the public comment portion of the hearing. And at this time, I will turn to my colleagues uh, for any comment or input. Yes, good morning, everyone. Uh, I just want to thank everyone that's here uh, for your comments. I also want to thank Dave Hunter and uh, his group for the diligence and the hard work that they put into this because there's a lot of things to look at uh, while deciding what which way to go or what to do. And there's still many things to look at, but this is one of the steps uh, of moving forward with this. I think it's a great opportunity for Reading 
and for Berks County, I won't go over the reasons because they were stated by many of you here. Uh, and as you know, this isn't uh, saying that everything is worked out. We know what the plan is uh, moving forward. We know all the details. This is another point in the process in which uh, a lot more due diligence uh, needs to be done uh, to determine what's the best way to move forward and what will bring the, the most uh, impact, a positive impact to the county and to the city. Uh, but I do believe this is a good project for, again, for the city and for Berks County. And it's something that we need to look into and keep uh, pushing forward to bring here to our community. Thank you very much, uh, Commissioner Rivera. Commissioner Barnhart. Sure, good morning, everyone. This turned into a glorious day and a celebration. So welcome back, everyone. We haven't had this number of people in well over two years. I wanna first start by commending and congratulating everyone who was part of this, whatever role you played, but especially my colleague, uh, Christian Leinbach for spearheading this for Berks County. Uh, the entity that's existing presently saw fit to appoint you as chairman. Mm -hmm. uh, so that shows the effort that Christian put into this as well as uh, the support from Berks County. I too remember fondly the uh, railroad uh, back in actually in the 60s when I was a young man uh, growing up in Reading, we would travel to Upper Darby to visit my aunt. Uh, and I long for those days to come back that there's such an easy way to get back and forth. The first two Sixers games, we could have traveled down by train to see the Sixers victories at home. Uh, but also I was hoping Greg would bring this up from Greg Downing from South Central. Uh, last night we supported Amtrak as a first step in the process to permit them to use the BARTA Transportation Center uh, for uh, a seven day a week, two runs a day uh, bus to Philadelphia, at least to bridge the gap between now and the restoration of passenger rail service. That was voted on unanimously by the South Central Board last night. We too believe in this very strongly as a, as a uh, mass transit agency. So that's certainly to the detractors, uh, it's not 1982, it's 2022, and, and the world has tremendously changed as well as Reading and Berks County has changed uh, transformational. And I see the rebirth in Reading, and I think we need to support it. And, you know, everyone looks at a return on investment in business. I look at this as the potential of a billion dollar improvement over 30 years. That tax base improvement alone will probably help to offset a significant part of any subsidy uh, the county may be asked to put in. Uh, so some of the comments I took to heart, like our is isolation needs to end, uh, Reading is ready. I think we're all charged up and we're ready to go. Uh, so let's make this happen. And I think we can quell uh, the people who do not support this and really prove to them this is really something critically important for this area to get back uh, on the map and not be isolated any longer. So I'm fully supportive of this. And again, I wanna thank everyone for their efforts uh, this is only the beginning of a uh, multi-year process. So uh, we're on board, no pun intended, uh, with this effort. And thank you everyone again for your support here this morning. Thank you very much, uh, Commissioner Barnhart. The vote today to authorize the formation of the Schuylkill River Passenger Rail Authority is simply the critical next step. Uh, the formation of the authority doesn't guarantee the return of passenger rail service, but it is imperative for us to understand we have never been this far before when working to restore passenger rail service. Every other effort in my lifetime, and I see Fred Levering in the back row. Uh, I remember Fred in the early 90s sitting in a meeting at the Inn at Reading. Uh, that ultimately led to the uh, Schuylkill Valley Metro study. Every study ended with the study. Nothing happened. Uh, I know that when the Burks Alliance, and I want to credit John Weidenhammer and David Myers, as well as uh, Jim Gerlach and the GRCA, they initiated another study. I believe it's the first study that was initiated from the private sector. All of the other studies were public sector studies. This was a private sector study. And there was something unique about this single study. Every other study focused solely on 
Reading to Philadelphia, connecting Berks County to Philadelphia. And initially, the Thames study, who I might point out, are uh, very strong rail experts, looked at the same thing and reached some of the same conclusions that it was largely unaffordable, even with subsidies. It was Thames and the Berks Alliance that said, wait a minute, everyone has looked at commuter service. No one has looked at intercity, which is Amtrak, connecting major cities. It was that epiphany that, in my opinion, changed the tone and tenor of the study. It is what got my attention a couple of years ago and ultimately I believe led us to where we are today. The Phoenixville study is also part of that effort. Uh, John and Dave, David became aware of Phoenixville doing a study to restore service to Phoenixville. They met with those individuals and there was an agreement we should work together. And we have. Three counties have worked together effectively Today, Montgomery County will be voting, we will be voting, and next Thursday, Chester County will be voting. Keep this in mind. It's not about going from Wyomissing or Redding to Philadelphia. It is about opening up Berks County to the largest population center and economic center in the Western Hemisphere. And it's been referred to, I can't remember who it was, it's the Boston to DC corridor. This connects us to that corridor in a way nothing else can or could. You have our commitment as we move forward that this process will continue to be public and transparent. There are a lot of questions that need to be answered, but until the authority is approved, we can't negotiate with Amtrak, we can't negotiate with Norfolk Southern or SEPTA, we can't accept funding, and we can't expend dollars. But there is a critical difference in the formation of this authority from virtually every other authority that I'm aware of. Last fall, as we were working on the documents with Dan Becker from Kozlov Stout, and I might, I, I want to recognize the Berks County Redevelopment Authority paid the bill to have their solicitor, uh, Dan Becker, Kozlov Stout, who is very uh, well versed in authority law in Pennsylvania, to act as legal counsel for the Tri County Passenger Rail Committee. Dan Becker put together in his office all of the documents that ultimately are being considered by the three counties. But last fall, I asked the question, can we put a special clause in our authority documents? When authority is formed in Pennsylvania, the life of the authority is 50 years. This clause requires that in three years, from the approval of the initial authority, each county must by at least a majority vote reauthorize the authority. Now, why would we do that? Because there's a lot that we don't know right now. And for those that may question, boy, you're making a decision, you don't know how much it's going to cost. Yes, we have estimates, but no, we don't know how much it's going to cost. We don't know what kind of subsidy may be required. There are a lot of things we don't know. In three years, each county, and there will be an election of commissioners in each of these counties next year. So in three years, there will be a requirement to vet this again. If each county approves it, it will be approved for another 47 years. Some people have said to me, aren't you a little afraid of that? that you, all this effort that uh, one county, and this is true, if one county votes not to reauthorize, it will stop. Passenger rail will not go forward. 
I'm not afraid of the truth. Whatever the facts are, whatever the truth is in three years, it will guide and it will direct the commissioners in each of those counties, as I'm sure it will here in Berks County. In the meantime, our process will be public. It will be transparent. And I am very pleased today to see us at a point we've never been before. And for Berks County, this is big. A lot of times being in Berks County, we feel like we don't know if we're part of central Pennsylvania or southeast Pennsylvania, or maybe the Lehigh Valley. Maybe some in the southern part of the county think they're part of Lancaster. The reality is when we talk about our economic future, we are tied instricably to the southeast. Transportation ties us there and passenger rail could be the critical catalyst that makes Berks County a powerhouse county in the southeast, south central Pennsylvania. So with that, I will ask if there is a motion to approve uh, the resolution. Sure, for all the reasons presented and more, I will move to adopt resolution 132-2022 authorizing municipal authority to be known as the Schuylkill River Passenger Rail Authority. I will second that motion. The motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The action passes and Berks County officially adopts a resolution authorizing the formation of the Schuylkill River Passenger Rail Authority. Motion to close the hearing. Second. Motion has been made and seconded to close the hearing. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The motion is carried. Uh, if you want to stick around, the next part of the meeting is going to be very quick, and it's a good thing because <laughs> my battery's almost dead. Go ahead. Uh, Mr. Chairman, for the sake of time, since election board was to start at 11 a.m., I will move to approve the agenda as presented. I will second that. The motion has been made and seconded to approve the agenda as presented. Any comment? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The motion is carried. Uh, very quickly, can we dispense with the uh, reading, uh, dispense with the reports of the treasurer, uh, controller, commissioners, et cetera, and there is no additional public comment. A motion? So move. Motion to dispense with the balance of the agenda, unless Mr. Seaman has something to offer. Receive, receive the reports. Yeah, we'll, we'll receive the reports, but I see the reports. With the reading. I'll second that. Yeah. Motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The motion is carried. Is there anything else for the good of the order? Motion to adjourn. Second. The meeting stands adjourned. That's how to run a railroad.